your character, man, was like, was there anybody else like you before you? Who was your influences? Uh, well, Joe Namath, and of course. Um, but I mean, was there anybody in pro wrestling? No. No, Ali, I, I loved Ali. Yeah. And of course, I got to know him pretty well, too. Did you really? Yeah. I traveled to North Korea with him, and he refereed a couple of matches I was in. And um, Wow. Yeah, and I, I, I never had a drink with him, but I, I sat in a bar with him in, in New Orleans, and brother, this is long after he's retired, and the women were still hanging on. I mean, I thought, just some oh again, man. He's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just like Elvis. Oh, you can yeah. imagine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he was uh, he was a joke. Oh, yeah, that way right there. Look yeah. at that. <clears throat> Look at that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he fought Antonio Inoki, that guy to the left. Remember that? Yeah, I did too. Did you? Re yeah, oh, that's that, right. That was in North Korea. Inoki yeah. was a fascinating character. What a, an interesting thing he did too when he fought Ali. Mm -hmm. Like he, Kick, Ali kicking let him, him legs. Yeah, now. he let him leg kick him. Did you ever see that fight? No. Oh I my did. God! Yeah. It was like kind of a real fight mm -hmm. because Ali was boxing and he's moving around and Inoki got on his butt and butt scooted and started kicking his legs, where Ali couldn't punch him. You never saw that? Oh wow! Oh no. dude, it fucked yeah. Ali's legs up yeah. really bad, dude. Because, like, Ali had never been leg kicked before, and he's f facing Inoki. And look, Inoki's doing this thing where he's lying on his back. Smart. And I think, you know, I don't know what they worked out, whether or not it was going to be a legit fight or whether Ali had any idea Inoki was going to kick his legs. I don't know what the agreement was. But it's very interesting to watch this because Ali's trying to, you know, entertain, and he's also trying to punch him, but Inoki's, like, kicking his legs. So this is the third round. See, so mostly he just butt scooted and tried to get Ali to come to him. But he fucked his legs up where Ali was having a real problem with his legs after that for quite a long time. Yeah, I bet. This look, the, that looks like that would suck. Look at he's going for leg locks and shit. This is so dangerous. You're a, like a legit pro heavyweight boxer and you're letting this guy yank on your ACL. I don't know what the rules were. It's weird. Can yeah. you see if you can find any of the video of him kicking his legs? Because it was pretty nasty. When you uh, had a match with him uh, in would you where did you have your match with? Uh, in North Korea. In North Korea? In, Pongyang, in yeah. North Korea. Yeah. Wow. Bad news. What was that like? I got matched with it's a, I think probably the most scared I've ever been of anything in my life. Really? Forget the plane crash, everything else. That they got that deal was so intimidating. They took our passports, right? And then they separated us. But they put me in one hotel, all in another, and the other talent that came along in another. So there, and uh I knew right away I was in trouble. The guy says he looked at my Rolex watch and goes, It would take me um one year I can think we're making like six American dollars a week. Um, it's what these people were making, the equivalent. I think he told me that. See, and he gave me, like, it would take 100 years to buy one of these. I wanted to say, brother, you can have this right now. If just get me on a plane home. I mean, it was that bad. How did they talk you into doing that? Like, what was the premise early? Oh, God, don't even get me going. <laughs> a promoter in WCW. Yeah. They, they wanted Foreman first. Foreman said no. Then they wanted Hogan. Hogan said, I can't make that one, brother. And so they came to me and they said, you know, nobody will ever see it. You'll be more famous than Lawrence Taylor. So I automatically went, yes. And then um, that was that. I, I, we never even talked. I'd never worked with Anoki before, so I, I, he just trusted me. Well, that's cool that you guys had that kind of respect that you could do that. Yeah. Because you didn't speak Japanese, obviously. No, Does he no. speak any uh, English? Uh, very little. So, so you did you know what North Korea was like, or we just? No, I had no idea. I know. I mean, I was good friends with Jesse Helms back then, Senator Helms of North Carolina. So I called. He said, "Don't go." Wow. Everybody I called that I knew in politics said, "Don't go." It's just a it's a volatile situation where there still is. Yeah. And they hate the Americans. They hate the Americans. Wh why? They hate they... the Americans and they hate the Japanese. Mm. Why they want you over there? Like why? Why did they? No, it was, it was, it was called. There? It was like it was a. Like a, a goodwill games, mm -hmm. Pro, Inoki promoted it, trying to promote goodwill between. Um, I don't know whether they're trying to get North and South Korea together or trying or ease the tension between Japan and uh, Korea. I, I don't know North Korea. I don't know, but they clearly hate the Japanese and the Americans.
It's so weird that they had a Japanese and American over there. They I wish you could pull up that card show. They will, they, you know, they have to hold, hold the cards up. It's like synchronized swimming, right? And they show a bomb. They show a rocket ship. 200,000 people was the crowd. 200,000 people in the stadium. Whoa. And they were mandatory attendance. It wasn't like they bought tickets. Ah. And it shows a rocket flying right over Japan and landing in America. Oh, there right whoa, here. this is yeah. it. Look at this. It's unbelievable. Watch this. If they have that. Oh, they're all synchronized. Yeah, they all it, hold it, the, it, all it, the it, most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow. But they show this rocket taking off and flying over the um, Japan and, 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 and blowing up America. Whoa. So you remember the name Mike Chinoy from um, um, CNN, right? Mike Chinoy, years ago, the troubleshooter. Okay. So he comes to me and says he want, they wanted me to say that, make a speech before they give me my passport that I thought North Korea could defeat USA, hands down. And so I, I said, I can't do that. And Chinoy said, well, you know, I don't know, I don't know if they'll let you out here without making that statement. I go, okay, here we go again. What am I going to think about? So anyway, I, I, I made it, I made it sound like they could be in, intimidating. In other words, they, they, I made it sound like they wouldn't, we wouldn't back down to them, but there's a possibility that they could win or something like wow. that. Wow. So you had to like come up with a, a crafted statement. Yeah, yeah. Was, Did they have to prove it? Yeah. Before they gave my passport back. Holy shit. Yeah. And listen, when we, uh, Ali and I got in that private jet, when we landed in Nagoya, instead of Tokyo, I got off the jet and kissed the ground. I said, <sighs> never again. I was so glad to be back. Wow. How many, <laughs> how long were you over there for? We're supposed to be there for four days. We're there for seven. They kept us three more days. Oh, oh. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Ali and I, Ali and I are at the Marigold Hall, which is their version of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And um, the guy is talking, and, uh, and then there's an interpreter, and he goes, <laughs> talking about how they, how they could destroy America and just dis whatever. And, and Ali taps me in the leg, keep in mind he hasn't said a word on the trip yet. He goes, No wonder we hate these son of a bitches. And I go, I go, I don't, please don't start talking now. Just. <laughs> Tell me later <laughs> yeah. when we're alone. <laughs> Don't bring that up. Now. Yeah, no shit. Let's eat this shit and get out of here. What kind of food they serve you? Oh, the food's good. I love Korean food. I, I still do Korean barbecue and stuff like that.